Nigeria is the third largest exporter of cocoa in West Africa, but cocoa processors in Nigeria say that the structure of trade tariffs in Europe put them at a disadvantage that is discouraging investments. To better understand the issues, I'm joining the studios now by Dimeji Ofemi, he's the chairman of the Cocoa Processors Association of Nigeria, and Shegun Luaji, he's the CEO of Courtyard Farms, a cocoa exporter. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the show today. And I think a good place to start is trying to get a better sense of this challenge with the trade tariffs. Um, what I understand is that the, the it, it's really in, it's skewed in favor of the processors in Europe right now. Yes, thank you, uh, Wally. Uh, for Nigeria, not signing the European Partnership Agreement meant that we'll be subjected to taxes, and they have decided that cocoa is the industry to tackle. Now, what is disproportionate about it is the fact that while the raw beans that is exported into Europe attract zero duty, right. semi-finished products that has value within the country is being taxed between 4 to 6 percent. And on top of that, uh, uh, the cocoa exporters also have a grant, I understand, of about 10 percent. Yes, that puts it at about 15 percent disadvantage. Right, so how do you compete that. in this environment? I mean, Well, I don't know, but government is wisdom. is taking a second look that it is important that we had value within the country. It does not distort the value chain because whether you, exp as an exporter, you can actually do toll processing within the country, add value to it, create jobs within the economy, rather than creating jobs in uh, foreign countries, as it is done in um, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, and right. the coast, and Cameroon. With that interest, the foreign investors are going to come in with their money and invest in the factories within the country, yeah. as they do in uh, Ghana and Ivory Coast presently. Right. Shaga, I want to bring you into conversation here. I mean, you're an exporter of cocoa, and I think an interesting point that I gathered before this is that Nigeria is perhaps the most privatized cocoa industry in West Africa. The government's intervention in it is very limited, and I want to get your thoughts about whether that is a good or bad thing, given the success that we're seeing in places like Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. Well, basically, we have, we have experienced uh, private involvement in um, in, in the cocoa industry for how many years now? Maybe 10? 1986. 1986. Right. 1986. So uh, we have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of it. We need some measure of regulation. Right. We are not asking government to come back, but we are asking government to be part of it by regulating, putting laws into place where we can follow those laws and then the industry can be well organized. Okay, but what are your broad expectations? What exactly do you think needs to change that can get, I, I know that the government has a target of about 500,000 tons by, I believe it's 2016. So we're now at half of that right now. So for that to happen, given the fact that it's only the private sector that's involved, clearly you, you will need some incentives to get that production levels to the levels that the government is inspiring to. Well, I basically think that uh, what government needs to do is to uh, uh, provide more money. So funding is the issue? Fu funding for implements, not to give money to politicians to come and run uh, the operations for us. We need government to provide implements like uh, chemicals, uh, uh, pumps, to, you know, to just better agronomics. Right. What I mean by agronomics is for us to be able to produce uh, a higher yield with a smaller area, land area. Because right now, the land that we have is limited. Okay. So if you are going to improve production, you need more land or you need to get fertilizer to fertilize the present ones that we are currently cultivating. Uh, if we say that we presently have 250,000 tons, as our current production. That is not correct. I think what we have is less than 200,000. Mm. And I think from my projection as uh, an industry player, maybe in the next 50 years, we might just have maybe about 20, 30,000. Mm. Because I've been there 20 years and I've seen production come down gradually. Right, so in your view, you think it's even gonna come down yes. from where it is right yes. now? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Right. If nothing is done. That is why my colleague here um, is always complaining about um, government not helping Copan out because they've had to struggle for beans with the exporters. And uh, 
we do not actually get 10%. If you are a startup export company, you will get 5% export expansion grant. Right. Then it, uh, progressively to go to 7.5 or 7%, then to 10%, mm -hmm. depending on the way government grades you. All right. So the grant, even if it's not 10%, it's, it's, it's positive a maximum for you. Of 10%. But but in your case, clearly yes. the fact that um, the, you you have to pay these duties and anything you export to Europe is yes. a big issue. So what exactly do you think needs to change right now that yes. may get things more interesting? Because the government has already um, said that they want to support value-added um, in industries, and of course this is one of them here. The, the, the first point is first all the eleven factories within the country, fortunately, are in the hands of Nigerians. So we've invested all our time, we borrowed money from the banks, as also exporters have. But the, the, the challenge is the cost of operation for Nigerian factories, we all know, energy is not there. We're spending, an average factory will spend about 15 million naira on diesel alone, not the maintenance of the generators, and they create jobs. Every ton of cocoa, that is exported out of the country means two jobs exported. Mm. That it cannot work for the economy. Mm. And if you're looking at job creation, extra value addition, for those of our friends, my colleague here knows that we have enough facility to even provide provision and make provision for them to add but, value as well. And they're interested. Right. But, if, but what exactly does government have to do? I and mean, what are you asking from them now? What, asking, what, what, what needs to change? We're asking governments to insist on value addition because that's what is done elsewhere. Ideally, in other countries, they tax export of raw beans, which means generating income for the government. It still doesn't mean the exporters of raw beans, those who still want to export raw beans, will not make profit. But it is impracticable for a factory to make any profit at all, mm -hmm. unless government also supports us in the area of energy provision, which is a major cost. It's not even, I mean, uh, the salaries are much lower than the amount we spend on generator. Imagine 15 million naira on diesel every month. Right. In 10 right. months, well, hopefully it's 1.5 billion. As the government progresses with the power yeah. reforms, hopefully that will be something positive for your business. Definitely, but definitely. We're looking eagerly towards that. Well, gentlemen, we have to leave it there. Thank you for Thank you joining much. us on the show Thank today. You. Interesting Thank discussion you. around cocoa processors and, of course, cocoa exporters in Nigeria.